So we're here with uh, Catherine Hayhoe, and um, we're at a conference here in Michigan, and um, uh, Catherine has agreed to talk to us for a few minutes. Um, uh, and uh, Catherine, why don't you just give uh, folks just a little bit about your background? Sure. Um, I am Canadian. I was born in Toronto. And when I was nine years old, my parents moved down to Columbia, South America to work with the local church there and also to teach in the school. And after that, we went back and forth between Canada and Columbia a few times until I returned to Canada for university and then moved to the States for graduate school. I met my husband, Andrew Farley, in Graduate University Christian Fellowship. I was the large group coordinator and part of my job was to greet new people. Uh, so I greeted him and he married me. Um, we still serve as the faculty sponsors for our local university chapter. And really I think that uh, Ivy played a big role in helping me personally to integrate my faith with my science. I study the world around us, I study the planet that God gave us, and I believe that by doing so, I'm actually trying to figure out what God was thinking when he put this planet together. So, um, how, you folks are now in West Texas. Uh, uh, how did you come to be there in West Texas? We are both professors at Texas Tech University in Lubbock, Texas. My husband is a linguist and he's also the pastor of a local church called Ecclesia. And he also writes Christian books, uh, The Naked Gospel and God Without Religion, and a book that we wrote together called A Climate for Change, Global Warming Facts for Faith-Based Decisions. So you are a uh, scientist. Can you tell us just a little bit about what area of science do you work in? My specific field is called atmospheric science, which means that I study the science of the atmosphere. And what I do specifically is I try to figure out what climate change means to us in the places where we live. Why does climate change matter to me living in West Texas? Why does it matter to somebody living in Florida, living in Seattle, living in the Midwest? It's not about the polar bears. It's not about South Sea Islands. It's about the impacts that climate change is going to have on our water resources, on our agriculture, on our local economy, and even on our health. And uh, for us at EEN, we, we talk a good deal about how the impacts are going to fall hardest on the poor around the world. Have you, have you looked at that in, in any way? As a scientist, I study the facts. But once we have this information, we have to look to our values to decide what to do about them. And our values tell us that we love our God with all our heart and that we love our neighbor as ourselves. We're also told to care for the poor and the needy. And what we see today is in the United States and around the world, the people who are being harmed the most, the people who are the most vulnerable, are the people who are poor and needy, the people who already spend all of their daily income on food and have nothing left if prices go up, the people who are dependent on certain resources that we're using up quickly in an unsustainable way. The motivation to care about climate change, I believe, comes from the heart because of the love that Christ has for us and the love that we can then share with others. So you, your commitment to this issue, uh, for, uh, you kind of combining uh, your science and your Christian faith. Can you talk a little more about that? People often say, well, how as a scientist can you be a Christian or how as a Christian can you be a scientist? But I think they're entirely compatible because I believe that I'm actually studying God's creation. And I'm learning about what he is telling us through creation, through my science. So you uh, have gotten a bit in the news lately. Uh, <laughs> uh, not something you wanted or desired, but um, there's been a bit of controversy. Um, can you just tell folks a little bit about what this controversy has been. Well, I spend a lot of my time talking to people who have questions about climate change. There's a lot of good questions that we have, like how do we know it's not a natural cycle, or how do we know it's not the sun, or even if it is happening, why should I care about it? 
So these are the questions that we have, and I spend a lot of my time talking to anybody who wants to hear about it. Uh, grade school, uh, senior citizens home, book club, church groups, Christian colleges. And so as my, my work is becoming um, more, uh, more spoken about, it's attracted some very unfortunate attention because some people don't think that we should be talking about God's creation within our communities. We shouldn't be talking about what we are doing as stewards of his creation, how we are expressing our love towards our neighbors. And so all of this came to a head recently when I had been invited a long time ago to write a book chapter in a book uh, called Environmental Entrepreneurs to be edited by Dr. Terry Maple and by Newt Gingrich. I had been invited quite some time ago, several years ago, but when it came out in the recent presidential primaries that I was writing a chapter in this book, I was uh, de-invited from the book and there was an enormous backlash um, against, again, the fact that I could be somebody who says that climate change is real, that most of it is because of human activities, and that as Christians, we need to care about that. And so, unfortunately, uh, you've received a lot of negative attention um, and even some threats. Um, uh, how are uh, you and your family doing with all of this? Well, it's never easy to be the recipient of these type of things. And as a woman and as a mother, it's scary sometimes. But at the same time, I'm so encouraged by all the people who have taken the time to write me an email, to give me a call, to uh, send me a message on Facebook saying that, that we stand together. We really are brothers and sisters. We share common values, we share a common faith, and we share a common love for our neighbors. So you mentioned earlier that you uh, and your husband wrote a book. Tell us again the title and just tell us a little bit about the book. Sure, we wrote a book called A Climate for Change, Global Warming Facts for Faith-Based Decisions. The reason why we wrote this book is because for several years before that, we had been getting a lot of questions about climate change. Questions like, it's freezing outside, where's global warming now? Or if we believe that God is in control, how could something like this be happening? I get a lot of questions as a scientist, but my husband as a pastor gets even more questions. I think maybe people are afraid to talk to the scientists. So we started looking around to see what resources there were out there that addressed these questions, and especially from a Christian perspective. We couldn't find any. There's some really good Bible study guides out there. There's really good scientific resources out there. But we couldn't find a resource that really combined uh, the science that I do with the faith aspect. And so we wrote that book to answer the questions that we all have, to walk us through what we know about climate change and why we should care about it. It's like I said, it's not just about the polar bears in the Arctic. It's not just about South Sea islands that are being flooded by sea level rise. It's about impacts on real people in our own communities and even in our own families. So um, what, what can people be doing about this issue of climate change? What can Christians can be doing about this issue? Climate change is such a difficult issue because it's so big. It's a global issue. And often when we, when we recognize the magnitude of the problem, our first response is just to despair, to say, what could I possibly do about something this big? But there is a lot that we can do. And, the, and I have great hope and great faith that by expressing the love of Christ, by following the leading of the Holy Spirit, that we can be inspired to do many things beyond what we could even imagine today. From the simplest, silliest little things, like replacing our light bulbs, which does save a lot of energy. If all of us replaced just one light bulb, that would be equivalent to taking nearly a million cars off the road just like that. But long term, I think that we need to develop a better appreciation and a better understanding of how we can really express God's love towards each other through caring for each other, through uh, making sure that we have the resources that we need, and through ensuring that our children and future generations will have a better life than we had ourselves. So um, uh, how old are your children? I have a four-year-old son. Yeah, you have a four-year-old son. 
has he ever mentioned climate change and what what has he said about climate change um, we talk about everything he loves earth science he's going to be an astronaut volcanologist when he grows up and so I think as a mother I think anybody who's a parent would identify with this you want the best for your child you want them to grow up in a world that has endless potential of renewable energy, that has clean air and clean water, that has every potential for them to do everything that you loved and everything that you enjoyed, and then even more on top of that. So I think that that, that is one of the greatest motiva motivations we have, is really wanting to make sure that our children have the best possible life. And finally, um, you know, as you've been going through this, both in terms of uh, you know, the day in and day out work that you do, uh, but also in these recent troubles, um, how has your relationship to Christ, how has that helped you through all these things? There are so many verses that have come to mind, um, as I'm sure happens to all of us when we're in the middle of difficulties. Uh, verses that strengthen my resolve, like the truth will set us free. That's a promise that we've been given. We've also been told that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. So when we feel like we are at the end of our strength, there is much, much more for us to draw on because it doesn't come from us. And then also just the fact that when we get discouraged and when we get down, we know that there is a source of encouragement so much greater than ourselves that is motivating us to, again, express God's love to the world. And that is, makes all the difference. Well, Catherine, we're so grateful for uh, your work uh, and for your ministry in terms of helping the Christian community understand climate change and your work with your husband and his ministry. And uh, we're just, we, we uh, pray that uh, uh, God continues to be with you in your work. Thank you.